And just one day into that vacation, she turned up dead. It has been several days since Shanquella Robinson lost her life, but people have not put the case to rest because of the mystery surrounding her death. Some even believe that her friends lured her to where she was murdered, and others believe not. Just when all hope seemed to be lost, the FBI finally had something to say, claiming that her death was not an accident and was planned by her friends. But why would they do this? What did she do to them? Keep watching until the end to find out. But before we continue, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below saying that I have subscribed and I will reply to your comments. Number 9. The Birthday Trip Shanquella Robinson went on a birthday trip to Cabo, Mexico with six friends from North Carolina. When she left, she was in good health and traveled with Malik Dyer, Winter Donovan, Elise Hyatt, Dejanae Jackson, her best friend Khalil Cook, and Nazir Wiggins. However, Nazir has come forward saying that he arrived in Cabo a day after the rest of the group and was not present during the events that led to Shanquella's death. According to Shanquella's mother, she received a call from Khalil the day after they arrived in Cabo. He informed her that Shanquella had drank too much and was suffering from alcohol poisoning. Later, Khalil called back to say that medical staff was in the room trying to revive Shanquella. But unfortunately, their resuscitation efforts were unsuccessful and Shanquella passed away. The group cut their trip short and returned to North Carolina, leaving Shanquella's body behind in Mexico, but taking her luggage with them. Khalil eventually dropped off the luggage at Shanquella's parents' house. Number 8. The Interview In a recent interview, Shanquella's mother disclosed that even after returning from Cabo, Khalil continued to deceive her about her daughter's death, claiming that she passed away from alcohol poisoning. The family, who knew and trusted Khalil as he frequently hung out with them, were shocked to find out the truth when the autopsy results were released. This changed their relationship with Khalil and led to a shift in their trust in him. During the interview, she was asked the last time she heard from him and she said, I haven't heard from him since the autopsy came back. And that's about two weeks or three weeks ago since the autopsy first came back and I haven't heard from him since. Number seven, the police report. Before we dive into the autopsy, let us discuss the police report that claimed her friends informed staff she drank alcohol. So this police report did not only state that her friends reported to medical staff that Shanquella had consumed large amounts of alcohol, but that she was found to be dehydrated. According to a doctor, she was stable but dehydrated. However, the guest declined to take her to a hospital and she went into cardiac arrest and was declared dead at 6 p.m. Her friends disregarded the medical advice to take her to the hospital, which should have been a warning sign for the medical staff. However, the medical staff did not investigate further as her friends lied about alcohol poisoning. The autopsy showed that Shanquella's death was not due to alcohol poisoning as her friends had claimed. The results prompted a further investigation into the circumstances surrounding her death, contradicting the initial police report. The Mexican authorities initially treated it as an accidental death, but the autopsy results led to a change in their investigation. Number 6. Mystery the police report that was filed on the day Shanquella passed away stated that she had died at 6 p.m. However, the findings of the autopsy contradicted this information. The time of death listed in the autopsy report is 3 p.m., which is a difference of three hours. This significant discrepancy raises questions about the accuracy of the police report. Furthermore, the cause of death listed in the autopsy report is severe spinal cord injury and atlantoaxial subluxation. This medical condition is characterized by an unstable or excessive movement in the first two vertebrae of the neck and is often a result of physical trauma. The presence of this condition suggests that Shanquella was the victim of a physical attack, contradicting the initial assumption of her death being an accidental result of alcohol poisoning. Interestingly, the autopsy results failed to mention the presence of alcohol in Shanquella's system, despite her friends claiming she had died from alcohol poisoning. This lack of evidence raises questions about the accuracy of their claims and suggests that they may have been attempting to cover up the true cause of her death. Number 5. The Leaked Video 
The truth about what happened to Shanquella was finally revealed with the leak of a video online. In the video, Dejanay Jackson was seen hitting Shanquella repeatedly, even though she wasn't fighting back. The other people in the group were also present, but instead of intervening or stopping Dejanay, they just sat back and watched. Khalil could be heard saying, Shanquella, can you at least fight back? This further confirms the autopsy report, which listed the cause of death as severe spinal cord injury and atlanoaxial subluxation was accurate. The report suggested that Shanquella was the victim of a physical attack and the group's claims of her death being due to alcohol poisoning were false. The absence of alcohol in her system, as noted in the autopsy, further supports this conclusion. Number four, reopening. As a result of public outcry and anger, as well as the determination of Shanquella's parents to get answers and justice, the Mexican authorities reopened the investigation into her death. The FBI also became involved in the investigation. The Mexican police overturned the previous ruling of accidental death and now considers it to be femicide. The Mexican authorities have now deemed Shanquella's death a femicide, meaning it was a violent death committed because of her gender. The ruling carries a sentence of up to 60 years in prison if convicted. Evidence points to the possibility that Shanquella's death was premeditated and carried out by a group of people, including her friends, who watched without intervening as she was beaten. Number three, plans. The situation became even more suspicious when another video from the trip was leaked online. The video showed the group planning something without Shanquella's knowledge or involvement. This raised a lot of red flags among people, as the group was trying to keep Shanquella in the dark and not letting her hear the discussions. Additionally, many felt it was strange that the group left Mexico soon after her death. Some believe that the trip may have been a ploy to harm Shanquella in another country, and then quickly return to the U.S. to avoid prosecution. The quick departure and leaving her body in Mexico only a few hours after her death further fueled public speculation that her friends know more than they were admitting. Number two, call-outs. The public has expressed outrage over the alleged involvement of Shanquella Robinson's friends in her death, with many calling for their arrest and life in prison. It is believed that the group had planned the trip to Mexico with the intention of hurting or killing Shanquella and that they recorded the attack to humiliate her. There is widespread belief that the friends were premeditated in their actions and they took advantage of Shanquella's vulnerability. The quick departure from Mexico after her death has added fuel to the suspicions of the public, leading to calls for justice. Number one, development. Mexican authorities have confirmed that the death of Shanquella Robinson was premeditated and that they have issued an arrest warrant for one of her friends who they believe was the main aggressor. They released a statement indicating that the case has fully been clarified and that they are carrying out the relevant procedures, including an Interpol alert and a request for extradition to the United States. Mexican authorities have confirmed that the death of Shanquella Robinson was premeditated and issued an arrest warrant for the main aggressor, believed to be her friend Dejanay. Despite the arrest warrant, the possibility of extradition remains uncertain with an expert stating the likelihood to be 50-50 as it depends on the strength of the Mexican authorities' case and the decision of U.S. authorities and potential U.S. courts. The FBI is working closely with Mexican authorities to determine the circumstances surrounding her death and determine whether any U.S. laws have been violated. The FBI is committed to bringing those responsible to justice and ensuring that the Robinson family receives the answers they deserve. The outcome of the FBI's investigation will determine whether the individuals involved will face charges in the United States. Well, this case is a lot deeper than we might think for several reasons. First off, the authorities might claim femicide was the reason for the murder, but could that really be it? I mean, no one really knew what was going on within her friend group, and there could have been some major misunderstandings. What do you think? Let us know in the comments, but before you leave, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos about your favorite celebrities. There's more to the entertainment, so check out this related video to see more, and I will see you in the next video.